Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Prashant Kumar and Mr. Mohit Barman on stage. Welcome, Mr. Thank you. Hi, uh, good morning, everybody. I think we, we already started the day with some fantastic uh, thoughts of the entire, you know, let's play as a theme. <clears throat> I just thought, um, you know, listening to the speakers and keeping to the array of speakers which we have uh, through the day, uh, let's take some pause on this entire subject of, you know, building a sporting nation, right? And uh, as uh, Gopi, Gopi sir mentioned, I think uh, it's to do with the entire ecosystem of, you know, building sports. And if you look at in the recent years, I think India has made significant achievements. And it's not just in finding signals where we have progressed. I think Kobe has mentioned about us winning the Thomas Cup, right? I think uh, Manika Patris, Batra is back on to some fantastic performance on table tennis, right? I think we had uh, Sudhanshu uh, Rudrash, uh, Rudrash Patan, who was the you know, air rifle world champion on shooting. So it's not just cricket, right? Uh, it's in many other sports, weightlifting. We have some fantastic medalists across Commonwealth Games and Asian Games. Uh, we have, uh, you know, great achievement happening in Neeraj Chopra, who actually won an Olympic medal for us and continue to have remarkable performance, uh, winning a silver medal recently. So, you know, these are all great signals to see how we see performances in multiple sports arenas is actually building in the nation. And why is sports so important in, in the growth of a nation? It's an obvious point, right? Um, and the obvious point is even in many of our offices, we have a table tennis board. Now, you know, people do spend their time uh, playing table tennis, uh, but we also have multiple, you know, sports championships in building an organization. And that's because there is immense teamwork which comes in. It's immense positivity that comes in. And as again, Kupis have mentioned, dopamine comes in, in building some great positivity in building not just organization, but you know, fantastic nation. So all these signals also, you know, make us ponder to think that how is this entire business of sports shaping up, right? Uh, because one is on sports, one is on looking at signals on how is the performance of multiple, you know, sports uh, personalities uh, across different tournaments and leagues. And as we look at it, uh, we have multiple leagues in the country today. Right. We obviously had the entire IPL, we had uh, the ISL, we had the Kabaddi League, we have the Coco League, we also had the Badminton League, we have the Table Tennis League, we also had a Tennis League, right? Um, so multiple sports league starts coming into it, and that is where the business of sports have also started evolving. But in all of this, uh, it will be a, a great pleasure for me to have the person who has been involved in the corporate world, as well as also being closely associated and invested and committed in building sports in the country. So, so to set things rolling, let me uh, introduce, we have an esteemed industry luminary amongst us. Um, he has led Corporate India as chairman of Dabar India Limited, the world's largest Ayurvedic and natural healthcare company. On the sporting side, he is a promoter and chairman of KPH Dream Cricket Private Limited, which runs two successful cricket teams, Kings Eleven Punjab in the IPL and St. Lucia Kings in the Caribbean Premier League. He has had a ringside view of the sporting landscape changes that India has witnessed and has been involved with other sports like badminton and hockey. Let's speak to Mr. Mohit Berman. Please uh, come in. Hi, Mohit. Thank you for inviting me. Good morning to everyone here. So let me, uh, you know, let me ask the obvious question, which many may want to start a conversation with you. Um, you know, you have been very much involved in the entire corporate world. You have been in the driving and shaping the entire FMCG, you know, sector. And uh, then we also see you getting into the sports world, right? Um, it will be interesting to hear from you, how did this entire sports aspect come in there and what was your vision and 
and how have been the things? Well, it's nice of you to give me such a warm introduction, but uh, my FMCG experience is not as long as Dabur has been here. Dabur has been around for 140 years. I'm the fifth generation. But uh, in the sporting arena, yes, um, uh, we were one of the first pioneers. And um, um, when the IPL or when the Cricket League was uh, touted by BCCI uh, to be launched, um, we felt that it was an opportunity. And at that time, although you know it was a little... Uh, shooting in the dark, but um, you know, cricket being such an important game in India, uh, we thought um, that, uh, and BCCI being the pioneers of cricket globally, uh, we felt that something like this uh, would, have a, a would, uh, would be popular. And uh, we were the first ones to actually, uh, one of the first lot to, uh, to bid for a team, and uh, we've been involved in uh, IPL right from inception. I think it's the 14th or the 15th year this year. Great. Um, you know, that, that, that actually tells us about, you know, uh, the intro to the journey. But when we look at uh, specifically on IPL, uh, I mean, it's more than a decade. It's almost one and a half decades of IPL coming in. I mean, IPL has actually produced not just the sport league, it's almost an industry, right, across the entire ecosystem. And how has been your experience? How, how, from that angle, how do you see the entire building of, you know, even if you look at cricket as a standalone sport, you know, what has been the IPL aspect, you know, many stakeholders within IPL, right? What has been an experience and what is your point of view on that? Well, you know, I mean, it all sounds very rosy now, but if you go back 14, 15 years, um, firstly, we had no idea what we were getting into. Um, BCCI, you know, and um, uh, the chairman of the IPL at that time, you know, their marketing they, was amazing and they, they were able to get all of us in a room and convince us that the cricket, uh, uh, you know, a league in, the, in cricket uh, would be, you know, hugely successful. And um, obviously, you know, all the big names, you know, showed up and, um, and um, you know, we were lucky to get a team, but after that, uh, again, it, I mean, it wasn't so easy. I mean, the first year, I mean, we could get no, no, we couldn't get uh, any sponsors. I mean, any anyone we went to go and meet, they just said this can't work. Um, you know, uh, your people go to watch cricket, they go to watch India, Pakistan, or they go to watch the Ashes. You know, forget it. This isn't going to work. So most of the teams showed heavy losses. Um, the central revenue also was wasn't that much at that time, and uh, the uh, the the auction, um, um, you know, the player cost that was set. I mean, in the beginning, you know, there was a lot of debate on whether, you know, it, you know, there were obviously some rich IPL owners and some not so rich, and you know, we felt that if we have a auction bidding, you know, with eight egotistical people in a room, I mean, you know, it's not going to be even. So. Some of us had recommended they don't have an open auction, but have a closed auction, and you know the player will get whatever he deserves, and it'll be all even teams. But you know at that time they wanted a bit of a, you know they wanted to market, and so they had us all doing an auction, and you know they realized it might be uneven, and they put up a max player purse, but that max player purse was so high that if you spend that amount of money, you know you'd bleed. So anyway, the first year was, was of course, a huge success. Uh, and uh, the second year, when we went back to uh, going back to the sponsors, again, we had a bit of a problem. Actually, the problem with the whole IPL was that it was only a, a seven or eight week tournament. So during the time when um, IPL happens, there's a lot of traction, there's a lot of eyeballs, and then suddenly for seven, eight months, you know, it's all quiet. And then the second year when we went, um, yes, yes, there was a little bit of demand, but the problem again happened, elections happened, we had to move it to South Africa. Again, excuse for the sponsors, you know, we, South Africa is not our main market, we can't go. So another heavy year of losses. So this continued, this continued for many years. And then on the sixth or the seventh year, then we realized that the only way to kind of break even, by then, you know, you had two or three bankruptcies, you had you know, two or three people who had to leave the tournament, and then on the seventh or eighth year, if you remember, two, two teams got barred for two years. So it's, it was a volatile journey. And on the BCC side, BCCI side also, there were a lot of, uh, you know, there was a lot of upheaval. 
but then you know we figured that the only way this is going to work, and also in the beginning, none of us really knew how to run a team. So you know, we were hiring people from overseas who then were coming, and you know, then filling up the management with their their friends and family from overseas. And you know, in the beginning, the attitude was you know, we didn't know, so we all you know kind of being made a fool out of. But then you realize on the sixth and seventh year that uh, you know you can run a good team without spending so much money, without spending so much on players. So we, we as a team Punjab Kings started to spend uh, least uh, on the players. So th then uh, we started to break even, but then that was a catch-22 situation. If we didn't spend on the players, the coach used to say, you know, you don't spend on the players, how do you expect us to win? The CEO used to come and say that, you know, how do you expect me to get sponsors when you don't win? So it was a, it was a little bit of a 360 degree, um, you know, catch-22 situation. Though, by the way, 2014, the year we came to the finals was the year we spent the least on the players. So then on the 10th year, the media rights went up, you know, dramatically. So the central revenue basically kind of covered all the expenses that, uh, that needed to be done. So it's only in the 10th year that each team started to really uh, make money. So you can imagine in cricket, if it takes 10 years to make money on other sports, how long that will take. Yeah, uh, that brings a good point. Yeah. Um, because the perseverance and the commitment actually, you know, it's not just on the players, right? I mean, it's also the entire ecosystem. I mean, we. We see a lot more sports marketing professionals today in the country. And I think especially a league like IPL also has brought in, uh, you know, a kind of a, you know, a desire for people to get into sports marketing specifically. I mean, we have, you know, multiple institutes today in the country today who's actually offering these courses as well. And we see actually, you know, youngsters actually wanting to take these kind of specialization. But, uh, you know, the point of even in cricket, it took a lot of time makes it, uh, you know, the non-cricket side. I mean, you have been involved in badminton, you have been involved in hockey, your family is involved in cocoa. And when you look at from the business of sports and that, as well as, you know, how we can actually stay committed for long, you know, is there any point which you have noticed which you would like to share? See, sports, uh, see, it's, uh, sports has to be really inculcated, you know, from school and uh, from the grassroots level. You can't just... Uh, you know, you can't just have leagues and uh, and expect uh, you know people to come and watch it and uh, and people and kids to actually um, you know follow the sport or to be um, or to desire to play that sport. You know, we left uh, historically, of course. You know, I mean, you know, we all played sports in schools, but it was never it was never a priority for you know um, parents to actually you know make their children. Uh, you know, take it as a, take sports as a profession. Whereas, you know, in the U.S., U.K., it's you know a lot of a lot of parents push their kids to uh, to uh, to take sports as a, as a profession. And therefore, when I when I studied in the when I studied in the U.K. and the U.S., you know, we used to play a lot of sports, different sort of sports in in, in schools. And uh, you know, a lot of the uh, uh, then a lot of these a uh, lot of the students used to get sports scholarships and you know go overseas and you know, get their education taken care of uh, financially because they were good sports, uh, uh, they were good sports uh, kind of uh, professional, not professional, but uh, sports athlete, athletes. And, but in India, it was never done that way. Even, so when, when the IPL became very popular, then every sports federation wanted to start a league, uh, you know, without uh, really kind of, uh, f the idea was unfortunately, you know, the, the the dollar signs or the money it wasn't like you know let's promote sport and uh, and and you know try and get more and more kids involved in this so the idea was let's do a league because you know now god bcci is making so much money so why can't we and uh, you had a situation like you know the hockey league started and you know if we, again, you know, they put a great board together and sold it as hockey is our national sport, and you know we we as corporates as people should you know uh, kind of uh, you know support it. I mean, hockey is a national sport. Please, you know, take me to two schools where they play hockey. Stop, uh, just stop a couple of kids and ask them to give you any hockey players' names. It's, it's, 
how is it our national sport? For a sport to be very, and then again, it ran for three, four, five years, and then folded up. You had you had the you had the badminton league, which was again became popular. It's very important that you know a sport can only become popular if 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 there are some icons that the, that the, you know everyone can look up to. And luckily, we had a couple of badminton icons, so you did get a lot of audience to come in. You, it was hugely popular. But then again. There were the people, the, the federation that did the badminton league, another federation came and said that we are the right federation. They sued this federation, that federation sued that federation. I mean, as a franchise owner, what the hell? I mean, I don't know what's going on myself. So the problem is that even our federations, you know, are controlled by, you know, your politicians, bureaucrats, you know, and not, and, and those federations need, you know, sports people to actually, you know, give a direction where to go, not just, you know, not just people who want to maximize, uh, you know, the sport as a, as, as, a, as a business or a revenue. Yeah, I think you made, you know, a fantastic point, especially mm. on the fact that, you know, sometimes, you know, we say that sports is all about stars, right? I mean, if you have some great icons playing, people see them, right? But I think, you know, a league like IPL also gave us an opportunity to create many more stars, mm. right? Now, what I'm getting into is, you know, we've got the women's IPL coming, right? And I think there again, you know, to support not just the entire league, but I think as a sport itself, you know, the commitment that uh, the ecosystem or the stakeholders of ecosystem puts in, in creating, um, you know, stars out of multiple sports, which brings into the question of, well, how do you see the future of non-cricket sports, right, uh, before we get into the women's, mm. you know, sports, but non-cricket sports shaping up. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a dramatic change, as, uh, as the esteemed speaker, you know, uh, said uh, before I came on the dais. I mean, sports is, uh, I mean, has gradually, you know, taken center stage in a, in a country like ours. We are, we're, the, you know, the largest populous country. We hardly have any you know, as I said, sports icons globally. So I think it's, I think with the whole IPL and with the other sports leagues, you know, have, have actually put a little bit of uh, interest as well as now corporates, you know, are spending money. Uh, you know, I, I know for us as a corporate, we, we, are, we, are put, we are putting some of our CSR money into developing different sports uh, and giving, you know, the, tier two, tier three, you know, villages, uh, an opportunity to play sports. So I think, I think we, are, we are heading towards the right direction. I mean, we're still a long way away because if you look at, uh, you know, a, a sporting nation, you look at the Olympics, you know, half the, you know, half the medals are basically gymnastics, you know, aquatics and those sort of sports. We don't have any, we don't have any Indian, um, um, you know, in, in playing in uh, or, you know, in those sports. So, you know, we, of course, you know, we, as someone mentioned earlier, we did well in the Commonwealth, you said we did, we got a couple of medals in the Commonwealth Games, you know, we've got one or two in the, in the Olympics. But if you look at, you know, the population we have, the, um, you know, the, the kind of level that we, we should be, uh, we are, the, the amount of more medals or the type of people we should be producing in terms of competing in in the sporting, we're still very far away. And you know, I appreciate that. You know, we're uh, we're heading towards the right direction, but I think it'll take some time. Great. So I have my last question to you. Mm. I, mean, I, I almost ended the next question, which is, what what do you what is your opinion on IPL Women's League? Right. No, I think I think you know it's the right time to do it. I think if you look at what's happening globally, there, there is, you know, more um, demand and uh, to watch, um, you know, women's sports. I mean, if you look at uh, um, a similar, similar sort of tournament they've started in the UK, which is the hundreds, they have a women's match as well as, uh, you know, the men's match. So I think it's the right time and, uh, you know, and kudos to BCCI that they've actually, you know, done the media rights before. Um, uh, people, they've asked people uh, to come and bid for franchises. So it gives everyone a kind of, uh, you know, some some sort of direction on what side of on how the business can shape up. So I mean, as 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 a as a team, as 
Punjab Kings, you know, we will, uh, you know, of course, bid for one. Uh, let's see, you know, well, uh, you know well, how it goes in terms of the auction. All the best to that, Mohit. Thank you. And uh, many thanks. But before we uh, thank the audience, any questions from the audience? Look, yeah, there is one. Well, you know, I mean, I, I, I've, I've actually really um, felt proud that some of the, some of our, you know, sort of gra Indian sports have become very popular. Like, I mean, Kabaddi, if you look at Kabaddi, I mean, none of us before the league would have happened would have actually, of course, all of us played in school, but none of us, you know, knew any players' names. And, you know, it's given an opportunity even for a game, you know, which is, you know, so, so, like, so Indian and so... Um, uh, uh, in our grassroots that, you know, players from those from that sport is now earning so much. So, you know, as a family, we've, we've, we've started uh, uh, the Coco League. We had our first season last year. So I think, uh, I think more Indian sports uh, uh, will, will, will actually uh, pave the way for our country. Great, great. I think uh, there are no other questions. So thank you so much. You. Uh, we shall be taking rest of the questions online, uh, offline. Uh, thank you so much for uh, putting up that interesting conversation before all of us, uh, Mr. Kumar. And uh, we have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please put your hands together and thank our speakers here on stage, Mr. Kumar and Mr. Barman. And I would request uh, Ms. Priyanka Bhadoria to kindly join us on stage. She is Associate Director for Exchange for Media Group to kindly felicitate both of these gentlemen with our token of appreciation. Thank you so much for sparing our time and joining us here at the inaugural edition of Let's Play Sports Marketing Summit. A big round of applause. Please give it up for Mr. Prashant Kumar, CEO South Asia Group M, and Mr. Mohit Barman, Chairman, Dabur India Limited. Thank you very much.